But this morning I managed to catch Paul Michael on the blower and we recorded a little Zoom set. And uh, just because it's really difficult having Paul Michael and Ricky so far away. Um, and they are so incredibly busy. But I decided, well, just record this little video with Paul Michael this morning just to speak about the importance of this um, uh, victory in the Labour Court. Good morning, PM. I'm so Good glad morning, that Mertz. you can join us. Uh, I'm sorry that you can't be here in person and thank you for wearing your good people disobey bad laws uh, t-shirt because uh, you know that is really what it boils down to in this crazy cannabis world of ours and wherever I go in the world and I wear that t-shirt or I hand out the stickers people just nod because we know that as the cannabis community, we are just trying our best, and um, and we are just uh, trying to trying to get ahead with something that has been very close to our hearts for over seven hundred years. Um, in light of what's happened this year, with the Cannabis for Private Purposes Act being signed into law by our president at the last minute before the elections. And then since then, our amazing victory with uh, uh, Bernie Enova in the Labour Court. I would like you to just um, give your views on the current climate and the importance of that Labour Court victory for the bigger picture. Yeah, th thanks, Mertz. Um, look, it's 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 been a long hard slog hasn't it and we've we've been together mm -hmm. on this uh, walking this path since 2013 and you've been on this path for even longer i think it's since 2011 um but look it's it's you and i discuss quite frequently that it's it's always uh, tempting if one looks back in two small increments you know if we just look back on the last two months or even four months you know it's it's very tempting to think that not much progress has been made but you know if you look at where we are relative to where we came from um you know back in 2013 there there is a hell of a lot of progress that's been made um the private purposes bill as you say or or, or rather the private purposes act now um is is indeed a massive leap forward and um once that is uh rendered operational by proclamation of the president you, you know we've discussed this before but it effectively removes cannabis from the operation of the drugs act and it creates that overnight hemp regime and um, we've got that favorite clause 1.2 um, or section 1.2 which which foreshadows a commercialization of of recreational cannabis trade in south africa um so so we definitely are making progress and hopefully what we can soon say is that good people obey good laws um if if we get this this massive project right and on the project of of good laws is um of course we had the 2018 constitutional court judgment which said that bernie enova was allowed to consume cannabis in the private uh, or in the privacy of her home and of course that's what she did she practiced that right that was afforded to her by the constitutional court um, and she got fired by Barlow World for doing that, um, for, for having cannabis in her bloodstream uh, when there was no indication or even suggestion that she was intoxicated at work. And um, we did take up that that fight. And, and uh, unfortunately, we were unsuccessful in the labor court um, in Johannesburg. But ultimately, and recently, we were um, successful in the Labour Appeal Court, the LAC, and um, Barlow World nonetheless didn't like that result and attempted uh, or asked the Constitutional Court if they could come and appeal that at the Constitutional Court. But I think that the judgment, the written judgment of the Labour Appeal Court was so solid that the Constitutional Court looked at that and said to Barlow World, sorry, um, we're not even going to hear you because you don't have any prospects of success. And What's beautiful about the Barlow World Judgment is that it is one that's founded in human rights, Mertz, and um, Bernie has um, fought for and won her her right to, to consume cannabis in the privacy of her home without being fired, and to the extent that she was fired, and that relationship is now irreconcilable, or that employment relationship is irreconcilable, she's now been awarded um, 
damages in the form of a significant, I think it's two years worth of her salary. Um, so, so I think that justice has been done, and I think it's 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 a very important nudge by the labor labor court of appeal, and for that matter, by the constitutional court to say to all employers across the uh, the country that in certain circumstances, um, and especially a, an administrative or desk job worker with no meaningful safety concerns or exposures um, or exposures to dangers, you can't. Um, you can't uncompromisingly stick to a zero a zero tolerance approach when it comes to cannabis in the bloodstream. So, um, yeah, I, I would imagine, Mertz, that there are um, employers now around the country who are scrambling to review and amend their, their workplace policies. Yes, and, uh, you know, I think if we can hold this Labour Court um, uh, victory, you know, close to our hearts when we're feeling disheartened, when we're feeling unheard, but this this is really all about a much, much bigger picture. And we were together, thankfully, um, last year in Vienna uh, at the CND, sitting in that plenary session, when the High Commissioner of Human Rights delivered that groundbreaking speech. And it was certainly one of the highlights of my last 14 years of activism. And it was really a privilege to have you there too, because being a champion of human rights and being able to see the bigger picture is so vital here. Um, you know, and Volker Turk, uh, really addressed uh, a room that was full of hundreds of member states and their representatives. South Africa was certainly there because we went up and introduced ourselves to the South African delegation. So there's no excuse for the ignorance of, of human rights. Maybe you can just uh, talk us through the importance of that and the bigger picture and why the bigger picture is so important for cannabis. Well, of course, I mean, our, our various legal challenges Mertz, have, have always been um, founded in allegations of human rights violations. Um, you, you would know by now that one generally goes to the court and says, well, well this law, this conduct um, by the state um, per se uh, limits my, my various human rights, uh, one or more of my human rights as listed in the Constitution. And um, my allegation is that it cannot survive the scrutiny or the justifiability inquiry of Section 36 of the Constitution. Um, so, so various of your and other pieces of strategic litigation have been um, won um, on the basis of human rights. But how this also speaks to the bigger picture, and I'm glad that you mentioned the United Nations and Volker Turk, etc., is that, of course, Various member states, including South Africa, seem to be um, terrified to move because they think that they're going to place themselves foul of these international obligations in terms of the various conventions and their reporting requirements to the INCB. Um, but what our research has revealed is that um, there, there are various ways of um, you know, backing out of, of the conventions and then rejoining with qualification, et cetera, et cetera. But, but, but what... Um, practice has proved is that various member states have um, essentially liberalized their cannabis and other drug law regimes on the basis of motivating to the INCB and for that matter, the UN body, general body, that what they're doing um, is to further advance human rights um, and to protect human health and well-being, um, which ultimately is the very and, and, and stated purpose of, of the UN conventions. So um, one comes full circle and, and, and realizes that by grounding one's cannabis reform policy and drug reform policy and human rights, not only is one able to achieve things at the local level, but one's able to justify oneself to one's international counterparts um, by, by observing and motivating for that on the basis that that one always has human rights um, as as one's uh, central impetus. Thanks. Yeah, you know, I I'm a sort of bigger picture person, and that's why I find our international work. And now, recently, we started to make inroads into the rest of the African continent. Um, 
this bigger picture thinking is is often ignored on on a local level um and just to finish off uh, how how are you feeling are you feeling optimistic are you um confident that we might be able to get both the bigger picture and the story of the ongoing rests on the ground do you think we will be able to um make make inroads into what is often quite a, a political arena um from from when we were at the Pakisa now just a year ago just over a year ago um it with the South African environment with the with the current climate um do you think we will be able to make make inroads without having to go back to court um, yeah, but it's, it's, I suppose it's a little bit speculative. Um, you know, I don't, I don't have a crystal ball, but, you know, we started off this conversation saying that, you know, it, it, it sometimes doesn't feel like it, but we actually have made a lot of progress. We already have made a lot of inroads. Um, I think that uh, the, the writing's now on the wall. One can see that although there might still be um, factional opponents to, you know, to, to the reform efforts, um, we do seem to be pointed in a certain direction and the reforms have already started happening and I would imagine are going to continue happening. Um, you know, that section one, two of the Private Purposes Act wouldn't be there um, were it not for at least some um, decision at, at a high level within governments that, that um, we should be moving towards the commercialization of recreational cannabis. And for that matter, um, we can all reflect back on um, President Ramaphosa's various states of the nation addresses where he's told us that these things are going to be happening. So short answer, if I'm asked to speculate, yes, I do think that we're going to make inroads. Um, that's the good news. The The bad news is that it might not um, happen as quickly um, or in the form that, that everybody might want. But I would say um, keep chin up and maintain optimism. I'm certainly optimistic because progress is progress. And um, we're not going to keep moving forward unless we all continue pushing forward. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm optimistic about it. And, and, and I think that um, maybe if we have this conversation again in five years, we're, we're going to be able to smile and laugh about, um, you know, just just how much progress we have actually made and and the various human rights and freedoms that 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 have been hard won but nonetheless won thanks so much and from everybody at fields of green for all all our supporters um the team here at the jazz farm thank you so much for always being there because i think that the bottom line to this conversation is that we are not quite there with the evidence being heard and if it wasn't for the amazing teams of lawyers that we've had um, walking this road uh, with us from the early days at Schindler's all the way through to um, you and Ricky and Cormac and the rest of the team at, at Cullinan's. We really um, appreciate you and thank you for walking this road with us uh, towards the evidence being heard. Thank you, Mats. It's always a pleasure. <coughs>